The Marty Party. Chris Johnston says, uh, replicating Thursday's effort, blah, 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 likely be replaced by Martin Marincin. Martin Marincin hasn't appeared in the Stanley Cup playoffs since 2017 when he was on ice for both goals against Washington in a 2 1 loss. That is so dry, <laughs> Christopher. How dare you, Christopher? <laughs> Listen, I was at game three against Washington when Martin Marincin was on the ice to kill off a five on three um, that despite his best efforts, the Leafs were not scored on. Cause boy, did that guy just love throwing grenades right up the middle of the ice. Ah! Martin My- Marincin, he's just, but the cat came back the very next day. The cat came back. He, he's got more staying power than Roman Polak, which I didn't think was possible. He's the How- longest tenured member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's How incredible. long? Well, he's yep. not the longest. Morgan Riley is. Second longest tenured yeah. member of the yeah. Toronto Maple Leafs. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but but in all honesty, there, there's a uh, – I mean, the Mark Marincin at his supposed best. Steve, you once described him as Gandalf at the bridge. You shall not – Pass! You like he's got- shall <laughs> pass. No, you that was pass. that was Igor Ojegandolf is is what I called him. Um, but uh, Martin he's got Marincin- that big wand, right? He's got that big stick that he's supposed to be able to use. I don't understand why they're putting this guy in. I don't. I don't get it. I do he not get another option. Dermot Rasmus Sandin. Or, sorry, Sandin. He's. I w- I would say for our Lord of the Rings uh, comparison, he's like an archer. He's great at long range, but then what, what happens once they breach those walls? He's great at preventing zone entries, but once they're in there, they are there forever and ever. Amen. Mm-hmm. Are, are you guys excited for a big Marty Marincin hit? Oh, <laughs> don't think I've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a thing that he does. But, I mean, he scored a goal on Vancouver once, and that was cool, on Thatcher cool. Demko. I mean, Merchant. Oh, is, he's well, we great. did get news he's today that uh, Jake kill. So we got to give him effort for that. <laughs> he is Jesse. Props. Let's be careful with our words because right. words hurt. He is on the penalty kill. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be careful with the words we use. Now, there are going to be. <laughs> are there any Martin Marincin defenders left? I mean, because we were like, hey, maybe after that AHL Calder Cup run, maybe. Here's a yeah. guy. That's, is winning the Calder Cup the worst thing that can happen to your organization? I don't know. Because <laughs> then that every be? member of that team, you're like, they're great. Every one of them, championship DNA. They know well, what they're doing. Some, there's been Frederick some players Cote, that have graduated. DNA. Yeah, for sure. Can, yeah, there have some guys. Yeah. 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 And the, the Leafs roster currently has 18 players that have graduated for the Marlies. That's 18. a lot. Wow. That's a That's lot. That's a good job. That's a lot. Yeah. It's a great job. It's amazing. Um, but you know, I think, wait, I, what kind of job is it? What? Jesse, put, press the button. What is, press the button. What, this Steve, a great great job. Job. Uh, oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> We're not going to do that all show. Well, wow. yes, we are. No, not. Why no. No, because I want people to actually listen. No. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, obviously, uh, the, the Martin Marincha news was preceded by, uh, the Jake Muzzin uh, news, I guess. And that was that he was released from hospital this morning. If you missed the play, towards the end of the Leafs-Columbus Blue Jackets game, the game was sort of out of reach. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois sort of cross-checked, sort of pushed Muzzin from behind. And it would have been a nothing play except for the fact that uh, Muzzin hit uh, a Columbus Blue Jacket player's skate on the way down, twisted his neck. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there is some sort of injury with it. Now he's gonna Muzzin's gonna be able to go back to the hotel. Uh, apparently, be with the team. I didn't see anything about quarantining in there, but he will be able to stay with the team. He's just gonna be unavailable for the rest of the series. So you got to think they're gonna try to win it for Muzzin. Uh, the Leafs, though, did everything, everything we asked them to do. If you saw the game, you know that the Leafs absolutely dominated play. They did something that we haven't seen them do all year long. Steven, what was that? Dominated. Dictate play. They dictated the play. That was you last episode. You were like, man, they, these guys, they need to step up and dictate play. They got the, they've got it. And it's almost like they listened to you. Almost. It is almost like that. And But what did it start with, Adam? I know people don't like this. People don't like this. But listen, if they're going to clog up the middle, 
and force you into the corners, what do you at least, at very least, have to do? Make the corners inhospitable. Kyle Clifford sent someone uh, to the moon. It was Dominic Kukin. I think so. Send him to the moon now. On a possibly illegal hit. Yeah. I. It was borderline. It was borderline. It's, it's playoff legal. We'll call it. That's a great term for it because uh, did not directly target the head. I thought three strides, feet planted at the moment of contact. Now, right. that I wonder if they're ever going to revisit that rule because, like, yeah, feet planted at the moment of contact and then straight upwards. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how long that sort of hit is for this world uh, or if it should be in our game. But uh, because he got almost entirely shoulder i think we're good right i uh, just right. kukin kukin wasn't knocked out he was just like does someone get the number of that truck because even if you get hit in the shoulder it's gonna oh that the, it's gonna the ruin your day him, he was going down it was a big hit but it's it's the effect that that has on the team right it's the effect yes. that that has on momentum that happens in the first three minutes and from then on even like when you're watching as a fan sometimes you just feel good and you don't know why Mm -hmm. yeah. that's what started to happen now you go through the first period and there are chances but they can't solve the goalie Jonas Corposalo is perfect through four periods in the series oh. and you get to halfway through the second period and you're thinking and they're starting to talk about it and Craig Simpson eh? just just driving that home right oh, yeah he was uh, Craig Simpson has no broadcast. idea what that's like because <laughs> he has the NHL record for career shooting percentage Yes. He doesn't yes. understand getting stifled by a goalie. He doesn't get it. <laughs> he, uh, Craig said it was, it was like he was driving at home. He's like, well, the players got to be, uh, you got to wonder what Freddie Anderson's thinking. You know, that guy, Corpus Salo's at the other end, and I just don't know how Freddie's going to keep up with this. And then he was, you know, he's getting into the, the heads of Tavares and Matthews. And so finally, towards the end of the second period, we get a Matthews to Hyman, back to Matthews, tip past Corpus Salo, And you just feel. Like in Matthews' celebration, you feel the relief that he felt. Yes. Do you know what I mean? He felt the had reward. How everyone felt at home. And it's a, uh, it was, it was one of those, yes, it was a, a reward for a job well done. At that point, the Leafs were on pace for something like 60 shots. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. It was really, they, they were really outplaying the Blue Jackets. And then John Tavares on his eighth scoring opportunity of the game, uh, breakaway. And I'm, you know, because when's John Tavares getting a breakaway? As much as I love John Tavares, it's not a speedy, I thought he was slow. Speedy, not a speedy guy, Someone but he was slow. away. And that was goal number three, or sorry, goal number two in the uh, in the third period, um, with another one where you go, holy smokes, he really, really needed that one. <laughs> and then of course Morgan Riley puts the empty netter away, so the big guys come out big for the Leafs. The question I have for you is, how come we've never seen this before, and will we ever see this again? Oh, I think we've seen it. It's just who have we seen this again? They need like, like to that, be like that. That complete of a game. That complete of a game. Uh, I don't think we have. Can I throw something like that, out there, Adam? That's a wonderful mug. Uh, throw it out there, Jesse. What about their last victory before this was all shut down? When they beat Tampa two-one, and it was probably the most solid Leafs game we had seen all season. 